Good afternoon, everyone. It's very good to see a lot of people uh, in this small room. Uh, welcome, and thanks for joining. I'm Jisun from Samsung Mobile, and I will talk about our new form factor device, foldable phones. So in this talk, I will cover what are the good things about foldable phones and how the applications can uh, provide good experience for the foldable phones and also how are we going to provide uh, platform level, software platform level support for the developer community. So we all know that the smartphones have been providing uh, good new experiences for last 10 years and it changed a lot of things like the way people think, act and also communicate. It also opened up many new opportunities for developers. Now we think a foldable phone is going to be one of the next game changer, which will uh, provide a very unique experience for users and also uh, new opportunities for uh, developers to drive innovations. Now let's talk about the first Samsung foldable. So this morning in the keynote, we announced the new UX for foldable phones. So the first Samsung foldable will be multi-displayed with two screens. And also, it's going to provide uh, multi-active windows for better user experience. Now, let's first take a look at what the configuration of each display on the device looks like. So this is the main display. The main display is large enough for providing unique experience. Just with the uh, more uh, surface area it provides, the experience becomes richer and more immersive. In addition to uh, the richer and the more immersive experience with, uh, provided from a single large screen, true multitasking will also become available to utilize this large screen with up to three multi-active windows. When the phone is folded, we still have another very useful and portable screen. In this mode, the user experience is more like your daily uh, usual small smartphone usage. Uh, but compared to the main display, the experience is more like optimized for focused and handy and very quick access and interaction to leverage this small screen. Now here's the numbers that you may be interested in. So 4.58 inch cover display will provide 22.1 uh, 22.9 HD plus resolution with 420 DPI screen density and 320 dp uh, smallest width. 7.3 inch main display uh, supports 4.23 QXGA plus density uh, resolution uh, with the same 420 dpi uh, screen density with uh, 585 dp for smallest width. So I will uh, show you some examples, expected user experience with some examples on Samsung foldables. So comparing the experience between the existing uh, smartphone and the foldable uh, main display, we can see that the foldable can actually uh, allocate wider and larger display assets to the application and it enables the contents on the screen to be richer and more detailed and also more immersive. On the cover display, when the device is folded, I said the experience is more optimized to provide a quick and easy access and also interaction, but it still provides a full-fledged functionality. Access to the quick panel, notification, call, or messaging is the messaging scenario. These are good examples to highlight the best use of a small cover display.
while the cover display and main display, each one actually provides uh, its own very unique experience by itself, the experience between those two displays are not just separate or nor uh, disconnected. Rather, uh, the experience between the displays are more like a con con continuous and connected seamlessly. For example, if you want to find the location, if you want to search for a location for the Moscow Center uh, from a map, you can do that with your, full, uh, with your phone folded. But the application will continue to run even if you just unfold the phone. Even more, unfolding the phone actually provides uh, more information with more visual uh, clues, like uh, what are nearby or what's the relative location to other uh, points of interest. Using the gallery app is similar. The application experience between the folded mode and unfolded mode are like this. And multi-active windows for multitasking is also one of the key features for a foldable device. As you can see here, uh, you can, while watching a YouTube video, if you need to uh, browse a website, you can open a browser and browse a website while your video still keeps playing. Moreover, if your friend sends a message and the message pop up, message notification pops up, then what you can do is just grab it and drag it to dock in the third window, like this. So you can still uh, chat with your friend, also do the browser thing, and while your video still uh, keeps playing. So it's uh, three window, uh, multi-active windows. So to support uh, this new form factor and uh, develop a new uh, user experience, Samsung and Google have been working very closely together as one team to define the best foldable UX and also proper Android level platform support. So now Adrian from Google will talk about the developer guide and the platform support to make real applications best to fit for the foldables. Thank you, Chisun. I'm Adrian, I work at Google, and I'm a software engineer on the Android platform team. Um, we are really excited to work with Samsung on this brand new form factor, really. And I'm here to talk a bit more about what Android is doing to support developers that want to target it. So to start off, uh, let's talk about app or screen continuity. Uh, screen continuity is really what we call the concept of seamlessly continuing the task that the user is currently doing after they fold or unfold, unfold the device. So in this example here, uh, let's say the user is looking at the map, they're interested in a place, uh, but they don't really get a feel for the surrounding of the place they're looking at. So what they can do is they can unfold the device, and if the app supports a continuous experience, uh, after this unfolding, the user will still be looking at the same place, but the app can now take advantage of that screen uh, real estate that now is available and show a bit more about what's going on around that place. And this really isn't a new concept in Android. Android, pretty much since its inception, has been dealing with the same kind of continuity issues, and so we are actually familiar with that, with that in, the con uh, in the context of uh, rotating the device or when you change the size of windows in multi-window. So why should you as a developer care about that? Well, users unfold their device for a reason, right? And usually that's because they want to dive deeper into the task that they currently are doing. And that really works best when the task that they are doing is not interrupted by losing state or the app going away or things like that. So for a satisfying experience, it's really important that continuity is maintained when you unfold the device. That sounds great, but how do you actually achieve this? Well, as I said, Android has been dealing with this for a while now. We have the system of configuration changes that we can leverage for the same thing here. 
And so unfolding the device will be treated as a configuration change in the screen size and the screen layout categories. And when a configuration change happens, the Android system will by default recreate the activity in this new configuration. While that's great and it takes care of like, adjusting the layout for the new form factor, uh, it also means that you as a developer have to make sure that the user's state is actually maintained during this recreation. And we give you some tools for that. Uh, you can use the unsafe instance state mechanism. And Android Jetpack actually also added a new view model library that you can leverage to make this easier for you. The alternative is handling the configuration change yourself. If you go that route, you will simply declare that you can uh, handle those configuration change those kinds of configuration changes at runtime inside your Android manifest. But that also means that you will have to manually adjust your application to the changing screen size and adjust the layer for that. In any case, for the best experience, make sure that your app supports multi-window and declare your app as resizable. Next up, let's talk about some changes we're making to the activity lifecycle in multi-window. The current behavior is visible on the left. Um, it's really that the, the only activity that is resumed in multi-window multi is the activity that the user last touched, which isn't really obvious to the user, like what's going on here and why some activities will be in a more interactive state than other activities. And it's also as a developer kind of one more state to think about when you're implementing multi-window, right? So to make things easier, we're introducing multi-resume. In this mode, all the activities, all the top visible activities on the screen are in the resume state in multi-window. Now, Android Pi didn't actually ship with this behavior, so if you want to take advantage of that, we're uh, like the app and the device manufacturer both have to opt into this new behavior. And we're actually working with the device manufacturer so this behavior is consistent across the entire ecosystem uh, according to our spec. And note that in the next version of Android, we are expecting and we're planning to make this the mandatory behavior across all devices and applications that run on Android Q. So let's say you're an app or you have an app and you want to uh, take advantage of this simplified life cycle. How does it actually work? Well, it's pretty simple. You just add this one line to your manifest and you're essentially done. Beware though that because now there could be multiple activities running at the same time in the resume state that your, your application will need to deal with this and uh, must be able to support more than ha having more than one resumed activity at the same time. This is especially uh, important around singletons that hold the currently resumed activity of which there might be more than one now. Uh, so make sure that you test your code and also all the libraries and frameworks that might make assumptions related to this. So I've talked about what's available right now. Let's also take a bit more of a look into the near future and see what we're doing to support developers targeting foldable devices there. In the short term, uh, we're working on releasing developer guides for how to best take advantage of this new form factor. That includes uh, things like ideal user experiences and all the behaviors and APIs I talked about. We're also working with Samsung to release an emulator that lets you test and also develop your apps for this new form factor without actually needing the device just yet. And so you can test things like how your app behaves when the configuration changes from the folded to the unfolded state and the new multi-resume behaviors. Taking a bit of a longer look in the next version of Android, we will add support for foldables and multi-display uh, to make sure that the behavior is consistent across the entire ecosystem. 
And as part of this, we're also working on foldable and multi-display emulation. So again, you don't have to just, like, you don't have to own this device just yet to make your apps actually work on them. Okay. At this point, I would also like to thank all you developers out there who are making Android really amazing with all the experiences you're building. And we're really excited to see what you will create next on this exciting new form factor. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. So we know and understand uh, building the ecosystem and also supporting the ecosystem is really important. So we work also with the developer partners. So let me uh, introduce Klaus from Flipboard. Klaus will talk about uh, how Flipboard is actually getting ready for the uh, foldable devices, foldable phones. Thank you, Jison. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming today. It's exciting to see you guys all uh, excited about this as, as we are. Um, and with Flipboard, Flipboard uh, is an app. It was built with the mission to inform and inspire the world. We do this uh, through a curated content experience that's personalized to you. If you open Flipboard, you'll see that it's filled with the best content curated by world-class publishers, content creators, Flipboard editors, and the Flipboard community at large. There's more than 30,000 topics in Flipboard. So whether you're into news and politics or you're into mountain biking like me, there's something for you in there. Over uh, the last many years, we've been partnering with uh, Samsung, very closely with Samsung, and you'll find Flipboard on devices, Samsung devices across the globe. So we're super excited working with them on the foldable form factor as well. We realize that Samsung is really building a new ecosystem here. So we want to lean in and make sure we take advantage of everything that's possible with this form factor. So let me show you what we're working on at Flipboard right now. You'll see this is Flipboard in the folded state. You'll scroll down until you find some content you're interested in. In this case, National Geographic. I want to see the beautiful photos. I scroll down, and I see them in the folded state. But the moment you unfold, we take full advantage of the real estate we have in there and we make sure that you're in the exact same place as you were before. Here's another example. The Culturist is a guide that's curated by Flipboard editors, gives you everything you need to know about entertainment. It's the same idea, you scroll down, there are different sections, and you, when you find something that you wanna look a little closer at, you can open the device and see bigger images, and you know exactly where you're at. We're also working on multi-active windows. So we're really trying to resize the app for every single environment. So to summarize, what we're working on right now is a size-free application. Think responsive web, but for applications instead. We're, sub we're gonna support app continuity, so when you go from folded state to unfolded, it's seamless and you end up in the same place, just with a unique experience. And we will support multi-active windows. Thank you. So thanks, Klaus, for the impressive demo. So I'm gonna share a couple of pointers to useful information. So developer guide will be available from Samsung developer site and also from Android developer blog. So the Samsung developer site will be available up and running uh, from today evening at 7 p.m. And we will populate those two sites uh, soon. Hopefully everything in Q4 this year. And for testing your application, we will release an emulator APK uh, from the same uh, link uh, for Samsung developer site, which will be available soon, uh, in, yeah, very soon. Yep. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for uh, joining this session. So if you want to, if you have any questions, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure to uh, say the question into the microphone. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, as a game developer, what is uh, 
you know, what are my options? Because I'm like writing to OpenGL, and then you fold out, and the, you know, the whole screen orientation changes. How may I be able to, you know? So you said you're a game developer. Yes. So I'm writing to OpenGL, you know, C plus plus and DK, and yeah. then now I go from cover into unfolded mode, and uh, what would be the triggers to, um, you know, uh, right. paint, paint, so paint the screen. We're, we're actually thinking about that. Um, we're working on things there, um, but we don't have anything to share just yet. Um, so really awesome technology. I'm curious what, what is the device uh, that's, that will have this thing, this feature, and when is that coming out, and how much will it cost? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so it will, it will be in the market when we are ready, uh, pr probably uh, sometime in next week, next year. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, uh, yeah. At the moment, that's the answer I can, I can give you. And also price-wise, uh, it's not yet decided, but price will be set to be appropriate as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Can you comment on whether DEX would be available in unfolded mode? Samsung DEX. Could you repeat the question again? When you go to unfoldable mode, like on your S4 tab, you can run DEX. DEX. Would that so be available? And would it then switch to Android desktop mode as so an option? So DEX support, uh, we are still discussing it. At the moment, it's not going to be supported with this device. But this is still under discussion, so the final answer will be uh, decided later. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, my question is that uh, there's some rumor that Samsung is also uh, preparing uh, 5G with uh, this kind of flexible display. So is there any possibility that this kind of device support also a 5G feature uh, in terms of a wireless capability? Uh, and my second question is that uh, for now, uh, we are seeing that uh, corporate, uh, in terms of Google uh, OS and uh, Freeport type of a reading uh, application, but is there any uh, internal uh, preference or priority that you are focusing on, uh, you know, finding some um, uh, applicable ex examples uh, with this flexible display? So these two questions. So in terms of 5G support for flex uh, foldable device, uh, I think uh, we need to wait to answer that. We are not ready to answer on that question. Regarding the uh, application, the customization uh, best fit for this device, we are trying to find the best user experience and thinking about uh, developing and work, working together with partners or internal app developers, but that's still under uh, work in progress. Um, I had a question about the outside cover display and sort of the design process for uh, whether it was an infold versus outfold and um, the size of the cover display, um, sort of being a smaller display with bezels on the top and bottom. Like how, the, how sort of that um, design was chosen. So for the uh, cover display, so cover display is 4.5 inch. So it's a little smaller uh, than the usual smartphone. So we are uh, focusing on providing more like a quick access and very easy access and quick interaction. But still, it's a full-fledged uh, screen, so you can do anything on the cover screen as well, cover display as well. So we are still uh, also uh, trying to find the best experience on the cover display. So it will evolve. Yeah. So on the cover display, when, the, when you open the main frame, what happens to the cover display? Does it go dark, or are you able to utilize that real estate? Could you, could you repeat so it? So on the cover display, yeah. when you open to the main display, yeah. what happens to the cover display? Does oh. it go dark, or are you able to utilize that? So it's going to, at the moment, it's going to be just uh, turned off, and the uh, experience will continue on the main display.
Hi, thank you for your presentation. That was great. Um, I have a question on the on the Android framework side. Sure. The um, um, is there going to be a new flag for the configuration to know if our app is launched in bigger or like a cover or main display, or are we just relying on pure size display size? Uh, at the moment, we're not planning to add a new flag, so we're relying purely on the size. So is there any recommendations, like if you want to really dumb down your app for cover display to just do like uh, kind of entry points of things, how, how does the developer know when you launch the app to dumb down your app if it's like, because it could be on a small phone and I have no, like we, you, how do you know that it's not just running on a small phone and that's the full experience versus a cover? Right. I think... Uh Generally, I think we, we think of the out or the cover display as a like full-fledged display, and so it should provide a full-fledged experience. Um, Just like if you were resizing to a very small window, basically. Exactly, yeah. OK. Uh, when will the foldable display be available as a, a merchant component for other handset makers? That's, that's a good question, but uh, we don't have a good answer for that now, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just a quick question about the form factor. When the device is closed, yeah. is there kind of a gap where the phone folds between the screens, like a teardrop, or is it very flush, if that makes sense? Well, the final uh, design in the hardware will be polished at the time the device will be in the market. So it's hard to say that, but at the moment, it's pretty much a polished and flushed, and I don't see any gap, actually. Yeah. Will the device's cover material differ on the outside when it's closed in phone mode from when you open it up? Are those two screens being covered by the same material? You mean the cover? Right, like on, glass on, on, versus on top polymer, of the, yeah. right? So if it's closed, is that? Yeah glass on the outside? Is that plastic when you open it? Is that display cover material going to be glass or plastic? I think this says more about the hardware uh, spec question. So it may change, but I think uh, the material on top of this display will be different from outside and inside. Yeah. Do you have any idea about how battery life is going to be uh, util yeah. affected because I mean, even even with your new Note 9, which has an, an amazing battery, I own yeah. one, um, it's, still, uh, an, it's still an issue. So that's I'm right. just curious. That's, yeah, that's a, another good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that because we are supporting uh, multi-actable windows, battery will be, will, can be draining uh, much faster. But we will try to make sure the uh, battery usage or battery uh, life will be at least the same as the existing phones. That's the goal, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the uh, unfolded multi-app uh, configuration, are the windows resizable, or is it hard-coded for the layout that you've shown us? You mean the three up windows? Yeah. You want to take it? Or? I mean, that seems uh, like a question for okay. multi-active windows, which is... yeah. Right in the, in the in the current like dual multi active window mm -hmm. layout, it's resizable. Uh, I'm just wondering if it'll have the same sort of functionality for the three windows. I think we're still looking into that. It's not final yet. Yeah. So uh, since okay here, <laughs> yeah. So since Android is supporting it, to Android. Framework is providing APIs for multi-window and multi-extended, uh, like displays foldable screens. Does that mean that this technology will come in uh, LG, Motorola, or Google hardware uh, devices also? I mean, so, I can't talk about what anyone else is doing, um, but we're making this available as part of AOSP, so any device manufacturer can pick up these kinds of changes in the next version of Android. So um, is there going to be a camera display when it's unfolded? Or is there going to be a camera inside and outside? So 
talking about the uh, hardware spec, I think it's a little early to talk about it, but we will we will talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm concerned about the, uh, three active uh, screen, right? So how about the processor? Like, is it going to be like a performance-wise? Is it going to be an, an issue for loading the uh, page? So loading the pages think, from yeah. the multi-window, yeah. the performance is going to be the problem? Mm -hmm. That's the question, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's going to be the performance is going to be impacted by the number of windows. So we will try to optimize as much as possible to uh, provide the best user experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Here. Yeah. So maybe 10 years ago, we used the further phone, but we changed to smartphone. But what idea did you, Samsung, try to make further phone? I mean, <laughs> I mean what, what idea did Samsung make, try to make further phone again. So the question is why, why are we suddenly making foldable phones again? Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. this, this cell phone is like enough to use. I mean, the big advantage of foldable phones is that you can essentially fit more screen into a smaller form factor, right? And so that's really why, like that's really the big advantage of foldable phones. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, okay. Maybe last one, yeah. Uh, hello, um, can Samsung say why it's settled on this foldable design? Why didn't you fold it the other way so that you have two screens on why didn't you fold the phone the other way so you have two screens like this, if, if you know what I mean, as opposed yeah, yeah. to the other way with a, like a book and then have, to have one screen on the outside and then right. keep the other I screen. I think in the keynote today, we talked about our folding as well. So that might be uh, on our roadmap to consider for the future product. But the first one we have is like this, in folding and the cover display. Yeah. I think, Hi. Thank you. another one? <laughs> the last one. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for the presentation. Okay. Uh, with respect to mm -hmm. this whole user experience, I understand the con continuity uh, is it, necessary to, to convey uh, the user experience. But um, you know, from a Google perspective, you guys have Android, and recently you put Chrome on on a, on a Pixel uh, Slate. So, is there some confusion in terms of? The whole ecosystem of, I mean, I guess you can run Android apps within Chrome, but it just seems n not to be cohesive, the whole experience of smaller screen, larger screen. Um, just wondering your thoughts on that. Uh, not quite sure how to answer that. Could you Sorry, use it for mic? mic? Cool. If you don't enable what, what resume mode or something like that, whatever we're calling it, and you start an app on the outside and then you open it up, what happens if you if the app developer hasn't updated that app? What's the experience? Uh, so multi resume is really separate from from that issue. Multi resume is about making all the apps resumed in multi window. Uh, what you're talking about is app continuity, right? And, um, so there it's really about correctly handling the configuration change, um, which, yeah, apps can do today and ideally would do today already, and then they'll get that for free. If they can't seamlessly handle this configuration change, then the same thing will happen as if, you know, your app might get killed in the background and then restored to a different state. Uh, same kind of issue might happen in this case. Yeah, I think we can take other questions offline. Thank you, thank you for joining the session and all the questions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And please rate this session in the application. <laughs>